For the first time tonight, President Obama is responding to questions exclusively for the newest cable channel Fusion about the recent spy scandal that has made many of this country's closest allies feel like enemies. A U.S. official just confirmed to ABC News that the NSA had been monitoring leaders from 35 nations and that President Obama was not aware of it until this summer. In an exclusive interview, Fusion's White House correspondent and a member of our ABC team, Jim Avila, caught up with the president to ask some hard questions on a tough day. You have to suspect that if he could have, President Obama would have preferred to cancel his interview today. After all, in any presidency, there are days of hope and promise. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. And days of transcendent triumph. The United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al Qaeda. And then there are days like today. Headlines about out of control spying. The White House under fire right now, uh, given all these revelations. And now, sources confirm, it was happening apparently without the president's knowledge. And there's Obamacare, the website in disarray. And of course, the other legacy program, immigration reform, now stalled in partisan politics. This was probably not the day President Obama would have chosen to speak one on one with ABC's new partner, Fusion. Good to see you. Good to see you, Mr. President. Congratulations on thank the you. new venture. Well, but speak he team. did, oh, no, taking no, questions on this no, difficult no, day. People wonder, how is it you didn't know about the cell phones being looked at or listened to, and why you didn't know and who should have told you? Well, first of all, uh, I'm not confirming uh, a bunch of assumptions that have been made in the, the press. Uh, but what I have said is that the national security operations generally uh, have one purpose, and that is to make sure that the American people are safe and that I'm making good decisions and I'm the final user of all the intelligence that they gather. Such as monitoring the personal cell phone of the German Chancellor. And the President of the United States of America. The one who invited him to speak at the Berlin Wall just four months ago, where he promised American intelligence was not running amok. Our current programs are bound by the rule of law, and they're focused on threats to our security, not the communications of ordinary persons. What the president said in our interview is that the one thing the leaks by Edward Snowden have done is make the United States rethink how we spy on our allies and how the NSA is controlled. So should we assume from that answer, sir, that, that you did or would know, you would know if actually that was happening? Jim, as I said, I'm not uh, here to talk about classified information. What I am confirming is the fact that the, we're undergoing a complete review of how our intelligence operates outside of the country. There are some very strict laws governing what we do internally. And that was the initial concern brought about by uh, some of the Snowden disclosures. Right. Uh, internationally, uh, there are less constraints on how our intelligence teams operate. But uh, what I've said, and I said actually even before the Snowden leaks, is that it's important for us to make sure that as technology develops and expands and the capacity for intelligence gathering becomes a lot greater, uh, that we make sure that uh, we're doing things in the right way and that are reflective of our values. Questions also emerged this past week about how much the president knew about the troubled website that was America's portal to Obamacare, the website that came online and then offline. This is unacceptable. It needs to be fixed. But of course, the administration keeps pointing out the fate of Obamacare does not rest solely on its website. In today's Fusion interview, the president responded to the possibility that not enough healthy young people will sign up. What's in it for the young people? Are they just the people who are going to finance the older generation in their medical problems? Well, this is pretty straightforward. A study analysis has shown that if you're between 18 and 34 right now, about half of the people can get uh, high quality health care for less than 50 bucks a month. Less than your cell phone bill, less than your cable bill. And the president seemed to be trying to connect directly with those young people whose dollars would help to bankroll the system for the elderly. At least I kind of remember when I was in my 20s uh, and early 30s, I thought I was invincible, but it turns out I broke my nose playing basketball. Or I had uh, unexpected illnesses or accidents. And making sure that you've got coverage uh, ensures that you're not uh, ending up paying out of pocket thousands of dollars 
uh, that you may not have. And so this is a good investment for young people. And then it's on to immigration reform, a subject many in Washington used to consider the third rail of politics, but which seemed tantalizingly within reach to then-candidate Obama. He made this promise to Hispanic voters in 2008. I cannot guarantee that it's going to be in the first 100 days. But uh, what, I can, first, what uh, I can guarantee, months? what I can guarantee is, is that we will have in the first year an immigration bill that I strongly support and that I'm promoting. Now in his second term, President Obama has yet to fulfill that promise. Immigration reform has taken a lot longer than anybody thought, and so now President Obama is in the fifth year of his presidency. It's still not been dealt with. He used his political capital on other things. His ability to convince Congress to do this is vastly diminished. He did embrace the DREAM Act, a path to citizenship for the children of undocumented parents but did not promise to protect those parents. We've got an immigration system that is broken. That's why my top priority has been, let's make sure that we comprehensively reform the whole system. Let's fix the legal immigration system so that we're not pushing people into an illegal process. And let's make sure that we've got secure borders. Though President Obama still has three years in office, some say his political clout to get the job done is waning. You know, all presidencies in their second term run into a problem uh, where they either become irrelevant or they regain their traction. And I think the president today and over the last few weeks has come to a point where this could either be the end of the relevancy of his presidency in Washington and people have to wait for the next president in 2016 or he can restart this and get, get his mojo back. Uh, but today is another one of those difficult days. One day on its own usually doesn't matter, but it's a combination of days that I think that has affected him. So I think the window is very small on getting this done. That window may be small, but at least on immigration, there is some hope of change. And change, we should all remember, is something this president has always believed in. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank Appreciate you. It. As for tomorrow, he has another new all right. day. All good? For Nightline, I'm Jim Avila in Washington.